Hey YouTube, in this video, we're going to be taking a look at the new NVIDIA app. So NVIDIA finally, after many years, AMD adding their revamping their Radeon settings a number of years ago, finally kind of caved in. They always had GeForce Experience, but GeForce Experience was kind of controversial because you had to have a login to actually use it. So for a lot of people, that was kind of a no-go. So I've just kind of been using the NVIDIA control panel which kind of locked me out of a lot of things that you had to have GeForce Experience to use, like, for example, Shadow Play. So I could never use Shadow Play or any of those other sort of things that uh, require GeForce Experience. It's kind of what we're going to do today. We're going to look at what you can do. Now, curiously, they still have a login. As far as I know, that's used for the coupon codes. So if you want to redeem, like if they have a special promotion sometimes... What we're going to do in this video, we're just going to kind of look through what this can do. And the main, my main thing with the NVIDIA app is I want to be able to do all the things that I could do in the old NVIDIA control panel. So just to kind of show the NVIDIA control panel, for those that remember it, it looks like Internet Explorer with the old back and forward buttons and the home button. It has had the same look for many, many years, but it gets the job done. So if we click on help, you can see the system information. So system information from the NVIDIA control panel will show you things like the driver version, the memory interface of the graphics card. So in this case, it tells you we have an NVIDIA GeForce RTX 4080 Super. So this is the information. So if I want to go to the app and I want to see the same thing, how do I find that? So I go to settings. All right, here we go. So system, my gaming rig. It just assumes that it's a gaming rig. I'm not sure why. But anyway, my gaming rig. Windows 11 Pro version, whatever. Graphics card, GeForce RTX 4080 Super. And there's the driver. The display is running at 4K, 144 hertz. So it's interesting because I'm actually recording this on a different monitor, which is not a 4K monitor natively. So I guess it is taking this information from the primary monitor, which in this case is a 4K monitor. So that's interesting that that's how it does that. Uh, if you don't know what the primary monitor is, it's usually the one that all your desktop icons are on. It is actually kind of hard to tell if you have an NVIDIA graphics card, if you have multi-monitors, which one is actually the primary um, because they don't follow the number one, two, three, etc. numbering the way Intel and AMD graphics cards do. It's kind of backwards. So in my case, I have three monitors and monitor number two is actually the primary monitor, not number one, which is typically how it works with AMD um, or number three, which is oftentimes how it works with NVIDIA. It's always backwards unless you have a mix of DisplayPort and HDMI, which in this case I have uh, two DisplayPort connected and one HDMI connected. So CPU, it tells you what CPU you've got. So in this case, we have a Ryzen 9 7950X. RAM, I like that it tells you how much RAM. That Some people might not think this is necessary, but I think that's very convenient so that you don't have to go and do things like open up Task Manager, for example, to see how much RAM. So 96 gigabytes of RAM. And then storage, it tells you... 9.1 terabyte in hard drive, 1.8 terabyte. This is very curious, plus six more. I don't know exactly how it determines that. My assumption is it's it's basing this off of the, the motherboard, the way the motherboard allocates and lists the drives to the operating system. Typically, the SATA drives are listed first, and that's probably the reason why the hard drive amounts are shown here at the top. Video overlay, so I have that turned off. Game filters, photo mode. So they have all this extra stuff. Oh, and down here at the bottom, notice it says NVIDIA control panel, access display and video settings. So that means that it, I'm assuming that it doesn't have everything combined as of yet. This is similar to how it was with AMD. When AMD first rolled out Radeon settings a number of years ago, they had a mix of Catalyst Control Center for some of the what they called the legacy functionality, which was like arranging your display monitors, that sort of thing, refresh rate, etc. So it looks like with NVIDIA, they don't have some of that yet. So if we go to graphics here, we can see 
Interesting. So it has OBS Studio listed as a program. And then it says Encoder Advanced Current Value. NVENC H.264 is recommended. The current value is not set. Encoder is simple. I don't know where it's getting this because this is not how I actually have OBS configured. So it says that I'm not doing anything for Encoder Advanced. That is not true. We are actually encoding this video using HEVC. So I'm not sure if, via the RTX 4080 super so i don't know why that is and then i'm not sure where it's how it's determining this mm, i don't think it's a good idea to click optimize while we're using the app especially to record video so i don't know and then we have a game here wolong fallen dynasty uh performance it, the game isn't optimized so okay this is interesting it's just interesting to see what they recommend. So volumetric cloud is only set to standard, but they recommend high. That's cool because I didn't know that. I didn't know that that's how I had the game configured. So that is actually interesting. So we can look at Hogwarts Legacy. Disabled due to FSR. <laughs> what? <laughs> okay. So anti-aliasing is disabled due to FSR. But the thing is, last time I played this game, I was playing it at native without FSR. So it's it's kind of cool to see how it it's this tells me that it's reading probably an INI file for how the game is configured before you launch it. Because when you change the settings in in game it will update the INI file so that the next time you launch it it has those settings saved. So I guess what this does is this changes the INI file. I don't know if this actually changes the game while it's running. That would be kind of weird. I think they could Maybe that works, but it says upscale type FSR. That's interesting. So it it's recommending balanced DLSS, even though I had it on quality FSR too. Balanced DLSS will look worse than quality because balanced I think is 1080p or if it or it's some intermediate resolution between 1080p and 1440, whereas quality is 1440 uh, in the case of 4K, which is the native resolution here. So that's interesting how it has these suggestions for people that kind of don't like, let's say somebody has a, like a 3060 or some mid range graphics card and they don't know how well their graphics card can run a particular game because they don't do the research or they just don't really care. They just want to play the game. Uh, they can just click this optimize button, I guess, and then launch the game and then it'll probably run at a playable experience. So I'm guessing that this means that NVIDIA has had to have tested a lot of different games and a lot of different graphics cards to come up with these recommended values. So quite interesting there to see. Global settings. So it has RTX dynamic vibrance. I think that's like a color filter. RTX HDR. CUDA GPUs in plural. So it means that if you have multiple NVIDIA GPUs that support CUDA, you can select a GPU to be used as a CUDA processor, preventing a GPU or prevent a GPU from being used as a CUDA processor. So that's, uh, what happens if I click that there? Okay, well, I only have one NVIDIA card in this machine, so that's the only option. You can't really do anything. Okay, it looks like you can adjust things like the shader cache size. I don't know what default is, so I have no idea what adjusting this, but it looks like it can go all up to unlimited or it can be disabled completely. I don't know what that means. Power management mode. This is was also in control panel. Modern technology, G-Sync compatible, or fixed refresh. G-Sync compatible is the default. This means that it attempts to turn it on by default, but if the monitor itself allows you to disable it, if the monitor has it disabled, then it won't run. And when it says G-Sync compatible, that is just NVIDIA's fancy marketing term for FreeSync because G-Sync is a module-based monitor dynamic refresh system and G-Sync compatible just means that it works with a non-G-Sync module which means that it's using the adaptive sync aka free sync so max frame rate uh let's see off oh this is a frame rate limiter okay so you can specify a global frame rate limiter so i like that this is included because i wasn't expecting to see this this is kind of like radeon chill however unlike radeon chill this is only the max cap like you can't specify a max minimum so like with with chill 
you can actually specify, like, let's say you set a max to, one, in this case, 144 for the refresh, so we don't have any screen tearing. You could set the minimum to, like, 90 or 60. If you go AFK from your computer for a while, like, if you have to go use the bathroom or whatever, with Radeon Chill, if you walk away and you specify a minimum, it will down, it'll lower the frame rate, whatever that minimum frame rate is, automatically without you having to rely on the game doing it. Most games don't have that. So it's nice that Chill lets you do that. NVIDIA does not have that. So that is something that is lacking here. Low latency mode, image scaling. This is, is this DSR? No, that's not DSR. Here's DSR. So you can turn DSR on from the app, which is cool because it's kind of hard to find these settings in control panel, just to kind of show people where you would go in control panel to do that. You go to manage 3D settings, and this is the list of the global settings, which is what we're looking at here. It looks like the global settings in control panel has more than what's shown here. So anyway, that is going to be that. It looks like most of the things that you'll probably use are in here, like the frame rate cap and turning on G-Sync, turning off G-Sync, that sort of thing. Those are things that I think people would actually use. DSR factors, I would use this from time to time. But other than that, I think it's mostly, it's got the things that it needs, uh, but it doesn't have things like adjusting the color. Uh, as far as I could tell, I didn't see anything. I don't know what this is. Yeah, that's not what was in the color. So it's it's missing stuff like the color adjustment. Like if you have a 10-bit monitor, sometimes it doesn't use the correct color setting by default. You have to come in to the control panel and actually set it. I know that's the case with my Sony monitor, which is a 10-bit. So it's nice that they still let you use the control panel because they have not ported over all of the different settings. But there is some kind of overlap. That's what it looks like. So overall, it's okay, but it's still kind of like a dashboard that you're going to have to cross-launch into other NVIDIA apps to use. And it's still missing some of the things. I think the less, less used things that you find in control panel, which is okay, but it's good that it still has the option to launch the control panel from within the app. I like that they do that. So anyway, guys, that's going to be it for my kind of overview on this. I think it's an okay application. It's nice that it it exists. It shows that they're slowly trying to modernize away from this ancient-looking Internet Explorer 6 control panel that they've had for multiple decades. So anyway, guys, hope you found this video useful, and I will see you guys in the next one. Thanks.